thank you all for joining us. And we'd like to especially welcome two people that are here with us. Mrs. Sanders, Mr. Davidson, and uh, his son is with us, and Carl Sanders is with us also. And Dean Ricker is in the back, special welcome to him. And we're here for an event, and I'll let Mrs. Sanders take it over. Oh, well, I tell you, it's awfully hard to believe with the football in the side. Uh, <laughs> you know, George is playing, the y'all are playing, the Eagles and everything, and to get anybody's attention if you're from the state of Georgia, everybody's tuned in, or fixing to go, or going. So uh, I was said, well, uh, maybe we should have done this at another time, but Rob's son is a student here, and my grandson is a student here, but he's at home with strep throat. He's been back in two for three weeks since I said to Carl Jr., keep him there until he gets well because it's hard to be around all the excitement of the school. And, but you, you got to stay out, you know. So I'm sorry he's not here to join us this afternoon. Carl has a daughter that graduated from here. And she's been very successful in her life. So I was talking to these young students back here and telling them how they're in the great part of their life and how I wish I could come back to college and go again. I really do. Now, I was going to make a type speech, but my sister and them said, you can talk. And so uh, I'm not going to read this because I know everybody wants, you know, just get this over with, just go to the parties on the sideline and do this and do that. But I am so honored that the Davidson family has given me this Cherokee Indian painting behind me. It has an interesting story to it because uh, it uh, hurt. His mother was my best friend, and I couldn't get any of the men in the family to go with me to Cherokee to meet the Indians. So she and I took it on our own. And uh, I will also tell you that having been in government, I thought I knew how to do things. I went up with the right papers, explaining who I was. I went to the department of the head of uh, Indian Affairs. And I had a talk with him, and I said, I would like to come play the Cherokee Indians, and I'd like to see how they farm and live today. He looked at me, he read the thing, and he said, uh, I'm going to have to turn you down, Miss Sanders, but I think he was thinking, here's some little old lady that wants to come up here and paint the Indians. So I got turned down flat, so I said, see okay, we'll just have to find the Indians. And back then, in the late 60s and 70s, the Indians, Carl Jr.'s child, we took him up there. They all dressed up in their attire and their dancing and making money with photographs. The government did not supervise or subsidize them. They just made trinkets and headdress and moccasins and they eat, eat the living out on the reservation that the government gave them after our government and our southern president, Andrew Jackson, uh, marched the Indians all out of the south to Oklahoma and that ended up being the Trail of Tears. Uh, one of the events in history is very sad situation. But uh, you go to the reservation now that the government gave them in North Carolina, there's casinos. They don't have to worry about making those moccasins anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All of the United States that's happening. If you will look at the news, you'll see. So they're making money and they all got business. But anyway, I've had a real attachment to Indians since I was a child. I think because they were all over the state, but they were all over down here because the Gullah Indians in Savannah 
when Okafor landed, Tommy Chichi was kind of the head man of the, that crowd, and there were only two tribes down in the southern, and then you had the Creeks, and then you had the Cherokees. So uh, uh, Okafor realized what he had after he looked around Georgia, and he traded. Uh, he, he made a trade with Tommy Chichi. If he would give Savannah to him, he would give him the uh, Asabal Island. And so he knew how to trade, didn't he? <laughs> and Savannah became our mother city. And so uh, since we're not that far from Savannah, when the people plowed the fields, I grew up on a 10,000 acre farm. So I'm a little bit country, a little bit city, a little bit town. And I have been, thankfully, able to talk to all levels of society. And I think that's a gift given to me from the experiences I had in growing up. But I do know that when they plowed the fields, they found arrowheads. No question they were all around. Because you can look at the rivers in this state. We have 15 or 18, 13 of them are named after Indians. Ogeechee, the Kanuchi, the this, the that. I got the list here. I just didn't think I'd bore y'all with reading all of them. But anyway, they left their imprint. And our biggest and most beautiful falls is the Alcoa of the North Georgia uh, Mountains. It's a resort that you, I mean, uh, a site that you go visit park and walk and stay and it's we have a very very interesting history so I don't know uh, since I said that, uh, his mother and I were great friends and I couldn't get in I didn't go up there with me uh, I had wanted to go after I met Chief Crow he and his Indian braves he said, came to Atlanta and put on a powwow. I thought, gee, they are interesting. So the, I traveled the state extensively because I had the opportunity to be first lady of this state, and that was a privilege indeed. You become very familiar with your state, its people, its towns, and, and, and everything. I think one of my desires in old age at 87 would be to start at the top of the state and go crosswise like this, all the way down to the bottom of the state in the open Pinot. And that's my favorite site, especially for all artists. That's the most beautiful place in the world, especially in April when the water lilies open up and all the various birds and, and trees and shrubbery and Oh, it's just fantastic. People, you run into people in there from Australia, blah, 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 all over the place. They are real fascinating. And uh, most, a lot of it is the openings are in Georgia, the others are in Florida, but the most scenic is at Waycross, Georgia. And uh, so I took my children on a photography trail down to the bottom of Georgia, and we went into the swamp from that end but I still think that the Waycross is the most beautiful from an artistic viewpoint or if you're interested in birds, fishing, you are allowed to go in there and fish, you just avoid the alligators and uh, <laughs> things all like that. Now, Rob's family has an interesting background. He comes from a long, distinguished family in Cal County. His family owns something that's unusual. You're all familiar with Stone Mountain. You know how big it is. It is one of the wonders of the world. Well, on the back side of the mountain, the Davisons own a, a great deal of land. And it looks like Stone Mountain's still going. And they have, in the past few years, donated that as a park. But that's, there's so many interesting field trips that artists can make and just drive them crazy if you do about all these places. It has interesting crevices of mosses and flowers and 
colored mosses, reds and chartreuses and yellows and this. It just, uh, especially with the rain we had this spring, it would be unreal to visit there. But they contributed that, and it, you approach it from Panola Road, don't you? So they played their part in the, the contribution back to their state. And everyone knows how dedicated I am to my town. And this, I have been associated with this college devotedly since 1966 with the Ford Fine Art Building and then a painting a year. So uh, uh, I don't know that this is all of them, but I said I'm 87, so I can't live much longer. I'll run them out of business around here. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd give y'all a little interesting backdrop to it all. And I decided if you didn't need a lesson in Cherokee and in history, uh, but a, a, something very exciting going on along the way uh, tonight. So the, uh, my sister said, I'm just winging. So anyway, is there any other questions y'all would like to ask? Well then, now you know about Cherokees. There were, uh, the reason I really was fascinated with the Cherokees the most, they seemed to want to emulate our lifestyle. They built houses like we did. They tried to farm like we did. Uh, they started a newspaper. They had their own government. But their downfall was, and it would be yours too, if you found gold. And they found gold in Delonica. And then after the word got out, here came all the, everybody going to join in on the gold rush. Delonica was the first United States men, gold men, so, in, this, in the States. So, I don't know anything else to tell you because uh, other than if I told you uh, the names of all of these fascinating, all the names of these rivers. But that's, I'll let Rob tell you a word or two. And uh, not many people can ask you a whole lot about Indians unless you've got an Indian professor. And I understand for a while there was one that was part of the Indians that worked with grandfather, not him, but his tribe, worked the uh, timberland. At one time when I grew up, timber was a big industry here. It is still, but they cut them and run them off to make paper. Back then, um, we were in the business of chipping the pine trees and gathering, you know, the tar and putting it in the process and separating it from mineral spares to, to the gum and shipping it out of the savannah. But that industry in this state, is, there may be one or two left in the state, but the biggest one would be at Valdosta, but that's about going. But the Lumbee Indians from Raleigh, North Carolina, followed the, the pine tree business, and they followed down to this state and went to work for my, my grandfather. And we have an Indian burial ground on the Foy property outside of this town is between here and Plaxton. And I guess off and on this Indian business was when I went to, when I was a child, another reason I guess I was interested in Indians, back then, if you went to the movie, there wasn't nothing but cowboy and Indians on. And it cost 10 <coughs> So life has changed. And that's about it. <laughs> okay, Rob? Um, she can tell the story better than I can about her incredible relationship with my mom, my late mom, that she had together. Yeah. And my dad and her mother were great friends. And, you know, I tell you, growing up, Carl Jr. and I, a lot of we don't even want to start, because I got your story. <laughs> and I know you got something to We won't go there. But this painting uh, that Miss Sanders painted uh, is. You know, it's, it's our pleasure as the Davidson family and, and my brother was McCurdy and the McCurdy family to present this to George Southern and to this facility in particular because I know if my mom is here right now, that's exactly what she wants. She loved this painting 
I don't know the real story. I've heard your version. My sister gave me a whole different one the other day. I had one from somebody else. But somehow, Mom either bought this baby from her or she gave it to Mom. But regardless, this is where it should be. And uh, I'll miss it because it's a miss it. I love this baby. But uh, this is where it should be. That's the only child, I think, the dance is boy. The Indian dance boy. The others were the older ones and all that go. I played at several chiefs, Chief Walking Stick and his wife, the basket weaver, who was the best weaver in town of the reservation. Uh, and I enjoyed doing them. In fact, they came down to the opening of my Cherokee Indian exhibition. And I also turned down a hunk of money. The Cherokee, uh, the um, North Carolina Cherokee Bank wanted to buy my whole exhibition. And it looked real and cost uh, because artists don't get rich. And I thought, oh, Lord. But, I, no, I can't sell that. I said, I am keeping one painting, and I'm not letting that go because I may not pass this way again. The deal's off. They were going to put it all in the bank. They were going to use the logos for this, that, and the other. So out went the door of the money. And Carl Jr. has enticed me for the last 10 years to put it in my will that that painting is his. <laughs> Sign, seal, and delivered. But not delivered yet. Okay.
uh, that I, uh, you now find people that don't have limbs that can paint with their brush. The desire to be an artist has to be within. And you can, if you have a desire, you can do what you want to do, no matter what. So I don't know if the Lord will give me a few more years. Maybe with y'all's help, I can find some of these people. So that's that's about it for my statements. And so anyway, y'all go have fun and win. <laughs> Oh, yes, I guess I will say that. Since this is this gift, then my gift after this is to go at, see, I told you it's age, uh, <laughs> my gift to the college is going to be a bus of about 55 students, some professors, to go to the second largest museum in the state, the Booth Museum in North Georgia at Cartersville, with with meals, tickets, bus, and trip to go on a field trip, and they'll really come back in love, love with the Indians when they go through that. And cowboys. We ain't got any cowboys that I know of, but maybe we'll end up with some in the fire today. You never know, do you? <laughs> when somebody's going to show up with a new trip. <laughs> but uh, that's about it. So. Well, thank, thank you very much. much. Well, thank you very much. One last thank thing, you. you know, folk art piece is going to become part of the Smith Banks folk art collection that we have from the Banks family, and many of the Banks family are here with us. As uh, his son and grandson are here with us as part of the Banks family, joining us, and the piece will move in there and become part of that collection. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming, and especially thank you.